excited to welcome everybody today. And, uh, uh, you know, as we were just talking, like some people are experiencing some, some snow, some evidence of winter that's upon us. And so that's really exciting, at least for, for me. Uh, so um, just a few announcements before we get into our program. Uh, so we do have a you found it. an informal um, gathering in Boise. Those of you that are in Boise, um, there is an informal gathering that's happening on the 15th. And that's at the Kathina Coffee Roasting Company at 430. And so you can find that on our website uh, about that upcoming gathering. Uh, we've been participating in a book club and that is ending uh, as well as the uh, peer mentoring group. So some great work that's been going on with uh, you coaches that have been joining those um, events as well. So look for more in the, the new year. Um, in January, we have our program, program called the Coaching Fishbowl. Uh, by Jennifer Starr. Uh, she's going to be coming in and, and talking about um, um, what that is and her experience in coaching, like what does true coaching partnership look like and the framework that leads to that partnership. And so uh, really excited to have her uh, join us next month as well. Um, so we'll just jump right into our program today. Uh, today we have with us uh, Michael Sherist uh, or Michael the Great. Um, so a uh, little bit about him. He's a 17 year veteran business coach, consultant, author, and speaker. Uh, in 2000, he had the opportunity to partner with ICF and Coach U, the founder um, who's Thomas Leonard. And they embarked on this millennial tour uh, where they met thousands of coaches. Um, most of them were struggling to build their business. And so uh, to help them, uh, Michael founded the Coach and Grow Rich um, and later Business Growth Solutions. And now Michael Rocks Coaching uh, is what he goes by. And so we're really excited to have him here with us today. Uh, to talk about time and action mastery. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Awesome. So let me just begin by thanking Todd again, our, our president. You're the president, right? Yes. Differential to the president. And big shout out to Stacy, who has been working with me to make this happen. Yes, I see yeah. Pamela clapping. It's a lot of work that you guys do, and perhaps there's other board members on the call as well. Uh, you know, all, all, of course, volunteer, and without you all, the ICF is, is really nothing. So thank you. Is somebody adding something? Okay, so let me, uh, let me so what I'm going to do today is share with you time and action mastery. We have one hour. I'm going to move fairly quickly, but I'm not going to rush. We're going to take questions and comments as we go. Just FYI, um, those of you uh, that are on camera, thank you very much. If you're not on camera, I would love for you to be. Of course, it's up to you, but it, I like connecting with you and making this as much like an in-person presentation as possible. So as I mentioned, I am gonna use slides, but I'm gonna toggle back and forth. So we're not just staring at slides all the time, but let me just go ahead and get started with them and cover our agenda. So time and action mastery, time and action roadmap, what to do, when, for how long, and everybody with themselves. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, do I, is somebody speaking to me? I think it's just some background chatter. Oh, okay. Time and action. So if, if you do have any background chatter, just go ahead and put yourself on mute. If it's nice and quiet, feel free to come off mute because I'd love to engage with you. If not, we'll, we'll go back and forth between you. Time and action roadmap, what to do when, for how long and why, to effortlessly earn multi six figures by the end of the week. Ah, I see Ann laughing, Todd smiling, Stacy smiling. That's good. 
because that is not true. And one of the reasons I put this up here, uh, and, and Todd mentioned the Millennium Tour. So in the year 2000, I traveled with Thomas. By the way, how many of you uh, have heard the name Thomas Leonard or knew Thomas back in the day? Yeah, a couple hands go up. Thomas Leonard started the International Coach Federation. So without him, we probably would not be here. He also created Coach U, Coach Ville, um, had a had an impact on other of the schools at the time. But we met all these coaches, about 2,000 of them on the tour, that were really passionate about being coaches, but didn't necessarily how to know how to grow a business. And back in that day, I asked Thomas for, for his blessing to kind of create a program to help coaches grow their business because I had a successful business at the time. Well, now you can't turn on your computer or throw a pebble without hitting five coaches who teach coaches how to grow their business. And so, and, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm psyched for the people that are doing it in an ethical and dignified way. And I'm disgusted by the people are doing it that are making it sound easy and it happens overnight. You can go to, from, from zero to a million dollars by the end of the month, because what happens is it makes us regular people feel like losers when we don't do it because they're making it sound like everybody can do it and it's easy. So in reality, I want to help you with all that stuff so you can live your best life in service to others, okay? To the extent you want to make it more than that, awesome. I love helping people grow their business. But for today, in one hour, let's talk about our time and our actions so that we can have the business that we determine we want and be of service to others. So the agenda for today is we are going to start with just kind of getting clear on what success means to us. Number two, we're gonna talk about Stephen Covey and his time management system and how it applies to coaches. Number three, we're gonna talk about the big rocks. You'll, if you haven't heard Stephen Covey mention big rocks, I'll share that with you today, but what are the quote big rocks or actions that a coach is best to focus on in order to build and, and sustain a thriving business? Then we're going to take those rock, those actions or big rocks, and we're going to put time allocations to them so that you know, okay, this is this is how long is it's beneficial to spend in each one of these areas. And of course, it's it's a template, it'll give you a guide, but it's up to you. And then we'll end with a cool visualization. So I'm going to stop screen share and I'm going to ask, is your business where you want it to be? Okay, so I want you to just think right now. And of course, there can be reasons why our business is or is not where we want it to be. For example, if you're a new coach, of course, it's not where you want it to be yet. But just for, for now, just for simplification, just show of hands. And you can, you for those of you that are on camera, you can just wave like this. For those of you that are not, just do the the hand signal, raise your hand if your business is where you want it to be right now. All right, so look around the room and I can't see any hands up unless I'm missing some, I'm looking one more time. Nope, 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 nope. So nobody's business is where they want it to be. So A, that's, a, that's an issue, would you agree? Again, there could be good reasons, but like, why not? Like, let's have our business be where we want it to be. And I also just want you to know you're in good company, right? It's not easy, in my opinion, to build a successful coaching business. Why? Because most of us who are drawn to coaching, again, I'm being general here, we're we're not necessarily business people. Now I am, but most people are in our coaches to serve people, to help people. You're, you're that type of person that wants to help and serve. And business is different. It's marketing, it's sales, it's handling objections, it's building, creating a website, and et cetera, et cetera. And if you want to have your own successful business, the schools aren't necessarily teaching a lot of business development. So you've got to learn somehow, right? We shouldn't be beating ourselves up because we don't know sales and marketing. It's not something you're born with. So, um, so that's why I want to talk about this today and cover the key concepts. Any questions or comments so far? 
Cool. A thumbs up. That's awesome. Thank you, Pamela. I can tell Pamela, Lisa, thank you too. I like when you guys give a little, little uh, back and forth. If not, why? Oh yeah, that's right. Thank you. I should have known this without having to come back here. Would you share, let's hear from three of you, maybe four, if we can do it quickly. Why is your business not where you want it to be? And, and I'm asking specifically, not brand new coaches. Like it's not where I want it to be because I'm not graduated from coaching school and I just decided I wanted to be a coach a month ago. I'm talking that some of you that have been at it for a little while and there's no shame in this, but let's get, let's get an idea of what we need to learn and do to build our business. And I see a couple people typing in. I see family issues that need my attention. Yeah. Life, life, we have life. Life gets in the way, quote unquote. And of course, there's nothing more important than family. Uh, somebody else said, I need to rebrand. Okay. Anybody else? You can share verbally too. Getting the word out. Need to get the word out for sure. Absolutely. And how many of you would agree it's sometimes hard to get the word out when our business is us, right? Like we got we to gotta talk about ourselves. Sometimes we even have to maybe brag about ourselves. Unclear on marketing tactics. Well, that's going to begin to change today. I'm a brand new coach still at Coach U. Cool. Congratulations on being in Coach U. And that's understandable. Anybody else want to share maybe verbally? Ask a question, no, good. Okay, those are some good reasons. And the good news is we're gonna cover a lot of that today. So I wanted to just show this picture, this two pictures coming up right now. This to me is a cool picture of what the growth of our business kind of quote should look like, right? It's, it's fairly, would you agree it's clear? It's moving towards where we want to go. It's not straight. To me, that indicates there are challenges, there are curves, we need to, you know, we need to uh, adapt. It's not flat, there's up and down, right? And so I've had people share with me, I love that you share, months later, I love that you shared that picture, it stayed in my head and it reminds me, it's not supposed to be perfect and easy and simple. It can sometimes be messy but it doesn't need to be this messy. Like I see this picture like, oh, and my head explodes, okay? Uh, I don't know how many of you have been to Dallas. I've been to Dallas several times. By the way, I live in Hartford, Connecticut. This to me is what the freeway systems look like in Dallas and I, I hate driving there. I just absolutely hate driving there. No disrespect to Dallas. So Covey time management. Um, so Stephen Covey, as I'm sure most of you know, is kind of considered the godfather. Sorry, guys. Missy, come on. I'm doing a presentation. She should know that, shouldn't she? The, uh, the um, Amazon delivery guy is across the street. She doesn't like them. Uh, Stephen Covey, godfather of time management, author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, several other books he has since passed. But he, does, he talks about uh, the simple fact that when you focus on the big things first, you also have time for the little things. However, when you focus on the little things, you don't have time for the big things, okay? And he does this cool presentation. If you YouTube it, just put, plug in Stephen Covey, time management on YouTube, you'll see him do this cool live presentation where he brings somebody up on stage and he has her fill a jar with little pebbles. And all the pebbles represent all the little things of life. Getting the mail, doing grocery shopping, getting the car washed, watching TV, all things we do. However, then when she tries to fit in the big rocks, like spending quality time with family, spiritual pursuits, uh, maybe serving the community, et cetera, et cetera, they don't fit, okay? And then, he, and then on stage, he like takes that blue rock and he goes, oh, I guess you won't be doing this. What's this? Oh, spending quality time with your husband. Guess that's out. But I'm sure glad you got plenty of time to run, do your groceries, okay? And so this, this got me thinking about what are the big rocks for a coaching business? That's where we're headed. 
And then when, and then he empties the jars out and he asks her to try same jar, same rocks and pebbles. And sure enough, when she puts the big ones in first, then pours in the little ones, shakes them around, they find all the crevices. And it is really kind of cool. It's like, how did, how did they all fit? It is pretty amazing. And that's the whole thing. Focus on the big rocks first and you can get everything done. So again, I started thinking, well, what are the big rocks for a coaching business? Okay. So now I'm going to stop share. We're going to play together. I have what I feel the seven big rocks are. What do you think they are? And just once again, a big rock, I'll word it this way. What are the things you are doing or feel you, quote, should be doing to build and sustain a thriving business? And they're the big things, not the little things. Go ahead. Uh, maybe I'll just, I'm just going to put a broad, very, that'll cover a lot of things. And I feel like that's consistent effort. Consistent effort. Very good. Consistent effort. And I would agree, Ken. Uh, you'll see on my next slide, that isn't one of my particular big rocks. However, that is absolutely, in my opinion, a principle, if you will, that that act that you said has to be kind of lay over everything that we do. Very good. Because if we give up too soon, never going to get there. Thank you. Who else? Well, you have to market to clients and potential clients to reach out and make contact with them. Perfect. So I'm going to just put market. Is that cool, Pamela? Market, outreach. And you, you also, I think, said the word outreach. By the way, Stacy and or Todd, I get really into the presentation. Sometimes I forget to look at the chat. So if I'm forgetting that, uh, let me know. I do hear, I do see funnel of ideal customers. Where are they? How do you communicate with them as to solve their problem? Excellent. Uh, good marketing, getting the word out to the customers I want. Good, good, good. What else? I would say like, um, you know, marketing, even the current customers, like, re, you know, repeat and also referrals, something along the Good. Way. Yeah, good, good. Why, why, why would we not ask? And by the way, I'll, you know, I'll share little nuggets throughout this. The key, you know what the key to getting referrals is beyond doing good work? Because even when you do good work with the client, a lot of times, you know, you don't get referrals. They're busy. Right. You have to ask um, for them. You have to ask. <laughs> Very good, Pamela. Huge. And then I'm going to add one to that. You have to ask them. And then what else? Anybody know? Teach them how exactly to refer you. So one of the things I do with my clients is if, if uh, and assuming and most of my clients really like me and are kicking butt. So I'll say to them, can we set up a 45 minute strategy meeting to discuss referrals for me? I don't expect you to do it on your own or to know how to do it, um, but would you mind visiting with me so we can go over it together? And that has made a massive difference. Mm -hmm. Cool, I would what else? Say also, Michael, if you do, uh, do you if you do that, you don't have to follow up with those people who give you referrals and say thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, always thank you. I, I give a referral fee um, and I, I send a, a gift. So absolutely show your appreciation. Yep, huge. Any, uh, what other big rocks? And remember, this does not need to just be on business development. So what's the one thing we're wanting to spend most of our time doing? Listening. Pardon? Listening. Yeah, sure. And what's listening a part of? What is it we all do for a living? Coaching. Coach, <laughs> right? So, so really, I'm being kind of facetious, but shouldn't we, in advance, map out our schedule? Here's when I'm going to coach. Here's when I'm going to do my marketing. Here's when I'm going to, what else? Uh, follow up with past customers. Thank you, Stacy. Follow up is huge. I'm going to talk about follow up in a little bit. I consider follow up part of marketing. 
but you're going to see in a little bit, Stacy, that we carve that out and make it specific to itself. So that's awesome. And then Tara wrote coaching. All right, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and share screen, and I'll just share with you what my seven are, and we'll see if they make sense to you. Um, just keep in mind that everything I'm sharing with you today. You know, I'm not, I'm, I certainly don't have all the answers. I've been doing this a long time and have helped a lot of people with their business. And like these aren't, you know, if you see, oh, he, he didn't put team, managing my team in there. By all means, you want to put that in, put it in, right? I, one of my favorite saying is there's what works and there's what works for you. Okay, so here we go. Here are my seven. So we have coaching in the middle. We have marketing. People said marketing. We have administration. That's big. We all have to do that or get somebody else to do it. Business strategy, professional development, projects and creating, and sales. So I'm going to just pause there, give you a moment to just digest it. And frankly, I'm, I'm tipping my hand here, but I hope there's going to be some questions because I don't, I would bet that. Each one of these are not, um, people might not know exactly what they mean or the nuances. So if there's not questions, no problem. But if there is, feel free to ask. By the way, I did forget to mention, I will be sending you the slides. So uh, feel free to take good notes as I see some of you doing. And, and if not, you'll get the slides. Or you'll get the slides whether you take good notes or not. Go ahead. So, Michael, can you say a bit more about projects and creating, please? Yes, I can. And that's a big one. So thank you, Chris. Examples of projects and creating. Well, before I, I just share, would anybody like to just share what you think we mean by projects and creating? Yeah, Anne. Well, I'm working on one now. I, I have found after years of working in um, you know, business leadership and executives and CEOs of small um, businesses, I'm kind of burnt out. <laughs> and so I've been uh, targeting a new niche. So I'm developing a new program. So it's not okay. like just developing a new program to uh, you have a new target audience, a new group of people that you want to work with. Okay. A new program, right? Whether it's your it's your one on one coaching program kind of thing, or your group coaching program, or maybe you've been coaching a while and you want to create a self study, some videos and modules, so you need time to do that. What's another good example? Could be anything. Working, yeah. Go ahead, Pamela. Books. Books. Writing a book. Redoing your website. Uh, things like that. Does that make sense, Chris? Books. Selecting yep, your books and articles, right? Yep. Awesome. In the yeah, in writing. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. My bad. No, no. You asked me if uh, if it made sense. I was saying uh, yes. It Perfect. does mostly make sense. Yeah. Perfect. Good. I'm going to just toggle back to give you a second to re revisit these and see if there are any other questions. So, Michael, a question you had said like redesigning your website why would you put that in the projects creating versus admin good question and i'm really glad it's, who asked that by the way where are you i did todd good todd thank you um, i i like when you guys ask questions because it it you know it's impossible to share everything like in a limited amount of time but when you ask it reminds me of kind of important things to say and that is so Todd's question is, why would you put website creation in projects and writing or in that administration? My reason is because admin is th more things like doing your billing, uh, figuring out your schedule, paying your bills, doing invoicing, uh, more administrative task type things, which are important, whereas the projects and creating are bigger and more, um, they're not ongoing, right? Like I, writing a book you most of us aren't writing a book all the time unless you're a prolific writer and when you end one you're starting a new one but they're projects big things that you're working on to take your business to a new level whereas an administration is smaller and more ongoing but the point i want to make is it's not so important as you can imagine where like if you put like 
if you put your things where I put my things, meaning the bucket or the rock, right? The general concepts are what's most important. Any other questions or comments? If not, I have a big one for y'all. Yeah, Pamela. What falls under business strategy? Business strategy, good. Anybody wanna take a stab at that one? Let me ask you this. How many of you, by show of hands, have written your, quote, business or marketing plan for 2022? Yeah. Yep. Now, the good news, again, you're in good company. The, kind of the bad news is if you really want to grow your business, wouldn't it make sense to carve out some time and map out how you're going to grow your business and achieve your goals mm -hmm. in 2022? Okay, I do want to put in a quick little plug for myself. This was not intentional, but I love and have developed a really cool way to guide you through a business plan. We do it in two hours and we take your, your marketing strategies and we map them out to projections for each of your strategies and each of your products and services. So if anybody's interested in doing that, before the end of the year or shortly after January, let me know. It's still a great time to get that done. But that's an example of marketing uh, business strategy. Another example is just taking some time, maybe once a week or a couple times a month and just pausing, taking a half hour to an hour, sometimes more, and just look, looking at things. How am I doing? Am I on track? Is there anything new I, I want to do or create? So it's just... Stephen Covey talks about, or, or is it Michael Gerber? Michael Gerber, the, the author of the E-Myth, talks about working on your business in addition to in your business. The last thing I just want to distinguish, can anybody articulate, you, you may have noticed that there's two big rocks. One is for marketing, one is for sales. What's the difference? So I won't go say, back to that. Oh, go ahead. I would say marketing is more finding your customers, just like putting yourself out there and, and getting known, whereas sales is actually the relationship process of, you know, building the, the cause like for me, sales isn't like people think sales is a very transactional thing. And it has a very connotative meaning uh, in our mind. We think of the used car salesman but a really good salesman is actually somebody who just builds a relationship and understands a need and then fulfills the need. Phenomenal, absolutely. So thank you, Kent, very good. Uh, and I agree, and I'm gonna just add a, a tiny bit to it. So consider sales, your outreach to, to communicate with prospects, okay? And I love, I love to define marketing as serving people for free. I love that because I think most coaches go, ooh, I like that. I like serving people. I don't like marketing to them. Well, then serve people for free, okay? Speak for free. Do a free Zoom uh, webinar. Do write an e-zine. Do a podcast where you're giving and serving, right? And then sales is once you, once you serve people for free, then you, you basically say or write, if you liked this and you wanna visit one-on-one -on -one to see if you might wanna work with me as your coach, let's have a complimentary consultation. It's a beautiful thing. And the complimentary consultation is the quote sales, but I love what Kent said. It's not even, it's not a sales thing. It's a, you get to know me, I get to know you. We build, start our relationship. We see if we're a fit. Right. And uh, and it's just a it's a nice thing. You got to I, I want to be I want to also be careful in that. It's not just all fluffy. You got to you got to walk, in my opinion, you got to walk people through a certain process. You got to help them identify their needs and wants, their pain points. But you, you can do this and tell them what you're doing. It's not like it's a secret. And then you have to have the confidence at the end to say, I think we're a fit. Would you like to work with me? And can we discuss it? You have to feel confident in quoting your fees. If they say, oh, I'm not sure, I need to think about it, you need to be able to challenge them if, if appropriate, ask them to step up, those kind of things. So it's not just all warm and fluffy. You've got to be a confident professional person. And I, I like to think that 
I can't get anybody to do anything they don't want to do, even if I wanted to. Who the hell am I? <laughs> right? Like, think about that. Who, who do we think we are that we can get somebody to do something they don't want to do? The furthest I go is get somebody to do something when maybe they're not sure, they don't believe in themselves, or they may want to wait a year and a half when I'm challenging them that now is better. Like, but that's about it. So thank you, Ken. That's mm -hmm. the difference between marketing and sales. Any other questions or comments? Are we good so far? Is, is this helpful? All right, now we get to the nitty gritty because here, what do we do with these seven rocks? We put them in, assign times to them, and, and later we're gonna put them in our daytime, our calendar system. So. You'll notice the word guide is in red because you might see some of these percentages or, or hours and, and kind of freak out. And that's OK. And frankly, if you do, I want you to share and ask because this is just a guide and a template. But I didn't just pull it out of thin air. There's some there's some rhyme and reason to this. And by the way, for those, this, like I said, this is based on a 40 hour week. So the hours add up to 40 and the percentages are simply those number of hours divided by 40. So for those of you that only want to work part time, you can just you can use the percentages and come out with the hours. I'll give you a moment to digest and think and we'll see what questions or comments you have. I have a question. Yeah, so, thank you. So coaching and serving is when you get paid. So this is a for based on a 10 hour coaching week for a 40 hour week. So this is only a quarter of the whole week that you're going to be paid for your time. Um, how can you up that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably the biggest and best question to ask. So thank you, Pamela. Um, for, first of all, I do want to just point out before, for just a moment before we get to how can we up it, that's, this is kind of the brutal realization, kind of like the dirty little secret of when you have your own business, you don't just coach. N nobody does. I don't know one business owner who truly owns their own coaching business that just coaches. Other things have to get done. So then to tie it to Pamela's answer, the question is you, how do you up it? You get other people to do some of the other things, okay? So we'll talk about that in a moment, but I did forget to say the good news is even if you only coach 10 hours a week, you can, you can earn a six-figure income. It doesn't take long to get to 100,000 on uh, 10 hours a week. And if, we, if you guys wanna do the math now, we can. If you just want to do that on your own. So that's the good news. If you're, hey, I'm, I just want to make six figures, want to live a nice life, then this is kind of how it looks. If you want to up it, one of the first things you can do, Pamela, that I've done and I've helped many others do is bring in a, a virtual assistant. Okay. And I'm a big believer that bring, and I'm going to just uh, stop share here so I can connect with you all. A virtual assistant, I say virtual. They don't have to be virtual. They can live near you or with you. Um, they don't cost money. They make you money. Because if you can free yourself up from doing admin, you're paying an admin assistant far less money than you earn per hour. So whenever I'm doing something administrative where I say to myself, Mike, why the heck are you doing this? There's somebody else that loves doing this. And you're paying yourself $500 an hour to to do the billing, like, right? And so that's how, that's how I challenge you guys to think about it. Does that help? Does that answer your question, Pamela? Mm -hmm. and, and there are many successful coaches out there who also delegate their marketing, right? Um, I don't, I don't uh, recommend that until you get a handle on how to do it first. Also their sales, their, their convert complimentary consultations. I used to do the consultations for another person, another coach. 
and he he didn't do them and I closed sales for him. He paid me a percentage. It was kind of cool. So that so you don't have to do all this yourself, but it's got to get done. I'll go back to the slide just to remind you before we move to the next one. Any questions or comments on anything else? So what do we do with this now? Before we go to the next slide, what, what do we now do? And then what, what, what is the benefit? What do we do with this slide, with this information? Schedule it out. Yeah. It's unbelievable, you guys. When you get anywhere near this, oh, I changed the order a little bit. I'm going to, I forgot I wanted this to come after. Here we go. When your, whoop, when your schedule begins to look something like this, your business will grow, period. There's no way it can. So a couple little qualifiers. Uh, this is pretty, this, <laughs> I realize this is tight. Like when you start looking at this, you might say, oh, I don't get any breaks on Monday. That stinks. <laughs> I didn't try to put breaks in or self-care, you know, all the other things that we want to do in a day. I just wanted you to see how, what, and color coordinate this to the previous slide. This is what those percentages and hours look like. And with that being said, questions on this or comments? So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to quote, oh, Todd, were you? Yeah, uh, question. So it seemed like, you know, on the previous slide where you had these rocks and the hours, I mean, I'm assuming I didn't do the math, but I'm assuming that they did total up 40 hours. Oh, but I guess this brings it, it's lunch. So 45, I, I just see, you know, the wide, it just seems like, is there something missing there that is a totally equaling, you know, that amount of time? Uh, That's all. Uh, did I hear you say with the white, it looks like something's missing? With the white. Yeah, the yeah. white, like, like it doesn't seem like it's based upon the rocks that it's equaling the 40 hours. Yeah, like, the reason is, is because th this, uh, this view that you have, 8 a.m. to 5 a.m., Monday through Friday, that adds up to 43, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think it's 48 hours, so... Um, so it's not, but the, what you see colored adds up to 40. Gotcha. So I, what I kind of did is I just wanted to, basically, I just wanted to create a template that has some method to its madness. And I'll explain that in a minute. And then you take this and create yours. Okay. But for example, you know, I like, I, so a lot of people say, I want to just start my day doing my email, kind of easing into the day you know, kind of doing work, my schedule, if I got to follow up with a, or email a couple of clients some things, that's, that's admin. And then you end the day maybe the same way. Okay. Then, then I, I personally coach Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So I, I did, did that for you. I think that's cool because uh, if you can take Mondays off or Fridays off for, for time, extra long weekends and such, that makes it easier without having to reschedule. Um, Marketing is you're kind of just getting most of that done out of the way on Monday. Uh, you might say, are you kidding me? I don't have, I don't want to do marketing on a Monday. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. And, and then you'll notice I have the follow-up on Thursday. So you're kind of separating, as I mentioned to Stacy, separating that. Um, so that's a little bit of how and why that it looks this way. Uh, Michael, there's a question in the chat. Curious how this allocation might be different for a part-time job holding a part-time coach holding a job and trying to move toward full-time coaching to scale it back all back or would certain things change Questions. yeah that's that is a great question and thank you very much for asking so as you can see here so i kind of look at this uh i'm going to just 
stop screen share. I kind of look at this like pedals, right? So in the beginning of your business and or you have another job, you probably don't have 10 clients, okay? So that so all those blocks might be zero or you might have one client, right? And therefore you don't need to carve out time for sales yet. So basically you want to, for the most part, make up, it's, it's heavy loaded on marketing, right? You might do more than eight hours a week. You, if you wanna grow and grow quickly, you might really crank on the marketing. Then as clients start coming in, the marketing pedal can back off a little bit because you've got to start scheduling time for clients. And then also this can ebb and flow over time, right? The key is though, um, when you take your foot off the marketing pedal, you're going to find yourself mo most likely in trouble and it's not going to show up till later. Like you can not do any marketing this week or next week. And it's, you know, it's not going to matter. You don't typically get clients that quick. It's going to show up in a month or so when you're like, where's all my business? Oh yeah, I wasn't doing marketing back in November. No wonder. But it does ebb and flow. Did that answer the person's question? I think it was Chris. Yeah. Those of you, uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, Sorry. It, an it answered the question. Um, it, you know, it, it drives another question. <laughs> and that yeah. is... You know, where, where is the effect of marketing? Um, you know, marketing and being out there and all these things um, is good, but it kind of assumes that you know exactly where you're dropping your messages and to whom. Um, otherwise, you're just, you're just spraying blindly. <laughs> yeah. So the short answer, a couple of quickies answer to that, Chris. Yes, it does. That is correct. In another slide, we're going to go over some examples of marketing. Okay. And then later on, we're going to kind of talk about the, the cycle of business development. But yes, it does. And and as you know, or as I hope I kind of said at the beginning, this is, you know, this is on time and action management. And, you know. It's again, it's it's complicated. There's more to it. Well, okay, what's marketing? Great, Mike. I carved out that time. What strategies do I use? Why? How do I pick them? How do I do them? Right? Again, you're not expected to know that. So you gotta you gotta you know Google it or pay some, you know hire somebody like me to help you or or um, you know collaborate with other people. But it is it is something that we need to learn. By the way, if this is you, Chris, and or other people, for those of you who have a part-time job uh, and, and want to also be coaching, it's a wonderful place to be because hopefully with your part-time job, you're bringing in some income, maybe even enough to pay the bills, and it doesn't put the pressure on you to need to find clients to have dinner, right? And because that can be tough. And then for those of you that are that might be working full time, but want to start coaching, I've helped several people, you know, especially in today's day and age, seeing if you can start to go to part time, even if it's not overnight, as you build up your coaching business. And if not, you kind of just got to do as much as you can, you know, on the off hours and on the weekends, et cetera. And, and it's not easy. But if it were easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Who would work for somebody else when you can, you know, do your own thing? But again, Michael? those are, yeah. Oh, yep. sorry. We had another question from Lisa in the chat. Thank and you. she says, what does your marketing look like? Yeah, perfect. So that, that's going to come up on the next slide. And I think that kind of ties to what Chris was saying too. And if it doesn't, Chris and Lisa and or anybody else, just let me know and we'll do it. So, so let's just for this moment, just look at admin and projects on either side of marketing. I think we already talked about these things, but let me just have you peek at those. And if, you, if anybody has any questions, now's your time to ask, and then we're gonna focus on marketing. Okay, so I like to think of, I, I like to make things simple as possible. So I would, I would encourage you, if it helps, to think of marketing like a train, okay? What's the most important part of a train? 
Anybody? Engine. engine. Without the engine, engine, train doesn't go anywhere. So the engine consists of uh, active marketing strategies, including but not limited to speaking, strategic alliances, networking, training, sending marketing emails. There's many others. Um, if you want, if you want to discuss some others quickly, we can. But that's some examples of active. Then there's the cars. Cars don't go anywhere without the engine pulling them. So they're passive marketing strategies, which I consider things like social media, your website, your business cards, your collateral material. They're all important. But a business card doesn't bring you business, nor does a website. It's just a, it's just a, pic, a bunch of pictures and words unless you're driving people to the website, and that's active. Okay, And then the caboose, uh, I think, is an important part of a train. I, I looked it up once, and cabooses were built way back when trains were created. I think it was for the, the, the workers of the train to, to, to be on. Is that right, Pamela? Yeah. I think so. Um, and, and anyway, so the, the caboose is your keep in touch. That's what KIT is, keep in touch marketing and follow up. And one of the things I, I recommend to all my clients and help them do is you got to have an e-newsletter. Even for those of you that say, ah, I hate newsletters, I don't read them. Eh, there's still a good way to keep in the front of your mind of your prospects, even if they're not reading your newsletter, they're hearing from you. It doesn't have to be a news an e-zine. It could be videos, email, making phone calls, sending gifts. Uh, those are some examples of keep in touch and follow up. I'm going to stop screen share. Any questions about marketing? And we've got just so we're, we know where we're at, we're at uh, 20 after and we have till 20 of. Is that correct? So we have 20 more minutes. So we're making good time. So I want to I wanna make sure we have time at the end so we're not rushed. And we can even add some questions at the end if you want. And to the extent you want to discuss marketing more, I'm happy to right now. And you can ask anything you want. It doesn't have to be about the presentation. I'm here to serve you. Lisa. I've been thinking about websites and you also talked about a virtual assistant and there are kind of two kinds of those. One is someone who lives far away, an actual person. And the other is things like calendars that, you know, that automatically allow clients to schedule. And I'd particularly like to hear your take on the calendaring and, and booking of appointments. If you have some recommendations in terms of tools or methods. I do. My, my virtual assistant um, uh, recommends and uses Calendly. Uh, you, I see your head nod, and I'll just type it in the, uh, in the chat for those of you who may not know it. Calendly, C-A-L. Oops, I got my keyboard. C. So I'm sure it's Calendly.com. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. It's the Perfect. calendar with the ER off replaced with an LY. Perfect. And then I use, I had this set up before she recommended Cal Calendly and she confirmed it's also great. I use uh, schedule once, schedule once. And they, they, I love it. Absolutely love it. Is that all you need, Lisa? Or do you need, need a one? Good for now. I, I By the way, how many of you, how many of you who coach, or you know, are in, are actively coaching and building your business, use a calendar system for your clients to book with you or your prospects? Okay, if you don't, highly you got to have it. I remember back in the day, sending emails like let, let's just make up that um, Anne yeah. wants to schedule a consult with me. Hi, Anne. Looking forward to our consult together. Here are the times that I have available next week. You know, please pick as many as you can because these are also out to other people and they may choose one that's the same as you. It is like, oh my God. And then Ian responds, thank you so much, Michael. None of these work. How do you look for the follow-up? And it's like, 
then then online calendaring came out. You send them a link and boom, they click on one that works. It's just, ah, and I think it's $6 a month, something like that, some crazy low number. Any other questions on marketing or anything? I was wondering, um, if, oh, go ahead, Pamela. Go ahead. Okay, I was wondering if you had some suggestions of good places to speak. Uh, yes. So the uh, so speaking, by the way, in my opinion, is the number one marketing strategy for coaches to grow their business and solopreneurs in in general, not just coaches. Um, of course, other things work. It's it's my bread and butter, and it's what I what I just love and think is awesome. So uh, obviously, this is just a quick nutshell, but. I don't know that you guys are aware, but there are, I think, 45,000 associations in the United States alone, 45,000. You think of a topic and there's at least one association catering to it. I mean, I could say uh, lens cleaner. I would bet there's the association of lens cleaning manufacturers out there. Like it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> And the 45,000 number does not count that many of them have at least one chapter in every state. So take 45,000, probably 70% of them have chapters. Then you got to multiply it by that, right? Like we're the ICF high, high country, not, and there's the ICF national. So associations are a great opportunity to speak for free usually at the chapter level, as you go up to the regional and national and international meetings, they'll often pay for speakers, but nowadays, not that often anymore. So you speak for free, but it's a great opportunity to share, to support, offer a consultation. Um, does that help? Uh, was it Stacy who asked that? Yes, thank you. Cool. Any other questions on marketing? I. Um Go ahead, Pamela. Sorry, I forgot to correct next. <laughs> so Pamela, then Todd, then Chris, I think might have had one too. Go ahead. Well, two questions. One is um, like online articles and stuff like that would be marketing, right? With that. Yes. Okay. So you only get one question. I'm sorry. So okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Online articles is a marketing strategy, yes, and it's passive. It's not active. Okay. And the other question I had was. Um, giveaways to conferences, like if you um, offer something in a raffle or whatever. Yep. That be a excellent, excellent. I, I would say also kind of passive, right? Like that's a mm -hmm. smaller thing that's not gonna be huge generator typically, but yes, very good, a good, good idea and a good strategy. Okay. Todd, you're up. Um, when you talked about newsletter, uh, what are, some components of a newsletter you think are essential to have? The short, the short version of that, I, I just want to say uh, for an e-newsletter, e the shorter the better. So I like to just take the pressure off. This is not some big long thing that you got to write. And I, I think the two essential elements are, well, actually there's only one and that's sharing something that can help them. So just Todd, what is, do you mind sharing what is the focus of your coaching business? Uh, life coaching. And is there a particular facet of life coaching? Yeah. So I coach to the work of Byron Katie. No, the By Byron Katie's work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Todd, Todd, and we're just using Todd as an example. Todd, what's one, one thing Byron Katie teaches? Any, anything. It could be a principle. It could be a big chapter in a book, just one thing? Um, I would say just being present in the moment. Perfect. Perfect. So Todd could write an easing article on three benefits of being present. So hi, I mean, literally, hi, everybody. Thanks for opening the email. Today, I'm going to share with you what, what being present is and three benefits to being present. Being present is taking time during your day to be mindful, to focus, 
so that you can manifest what you want. And three benefits are more peace, better focus, and more clarity. Um, I hope you enjoyed this newsletter. I challenge you to incorporate more presence into your life. And to the extent you want to share with me what, what you're going to do, feel free to email me. I mean, right? Like it could literally be that simple. And I share with that with you. And I, I'm glad, Todd, you allowed me to play along just to give you an idea of that this doesn't need to be rocket science. I mean, you can challenge yourself to get better and come up with better topics, be thought provoking, challenge people. You can do any and all of that. And it doesn't need to be. That helpful? Yes, thank you. And, and just to be, I sometimes like to remind myself, Mike, you're, you know, now you're making it sound like it's so simple. Hey, write an easy and fuck three minutes a week and you too can have a list of 10,000 people and make a hundred grand a year just from your easy. So it just doesn't happen that way. And keeping it simple and, and keeping on top of mind awareness of your, of your prospects is helpful. Would an easy in our newsletter also be um, passive? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Chris, did you have a question or comment? Uh, it was more, yes, more channel specific, really. But yes, sir, how much or how valuable is LinkedIn as a tool for reaching prospective and existing clients? Great question. I'll, I'll first state that I am not a LinkedIn expert. Uh, it's, it is interesting, though. I was talking to a friend and colleague the day before yesterday who is a LinkedIn expert. I was asking him if he can contribute to my, my, my clients. Um, so LinkedIn and all, and all social media is only, well, let's just say LinkedIn. LinkedIn can be a very effective tool when and if you're using it the right way, from what I understood through him. And, and there's a lot of people out there using it the wrong way. And one particular example, I didn't even realize it, but um, you, can, you can have robots reaching out to people to friend them. Like you can, you can create a little template. Like I'll get an email saying, hey, Mike, um, I'm, a, I'm a business development coach and here's, here's my three tips on how to grow your business. Call me if you need me. And I'm like, does this, not, does this person not know I'm a business development coach? Like, why would they send this to me? Mm -hmm. And Eddie was like, oh, that's a bot. They just set it up. That's going out to their whole connection. Well, if you do that, um, you're not going to business on LinkedIn, but if you do it in an appropriate community-based way, building relationships, it can be a nice strategy. Uh, can I add something? Uh, yeah. That? Um, so any great salesman knows that, you know, prospecting is a very key essential part to sales. So for me, what LinkedIn can do isn't so much as a point of contact, as a source of information of, you know, where this person, what's important to them, you know, where this person went to school. So for example, when I was in the transportation industry, uh, re, you know, find somebody in a position that I would be, you know, it, I would be interested in getting to know when I cold call them. Now I'm going to talk about University of Texas football. I mean, well, that's something that I know, you know, I have a face, find my common bases, cover them. And, you know, LinkedIn didn't so much provide the, you know, contact my, I had, to, I actually did it the old fashioned way by picking up the phone and, and you know, trying to cold call and get through to somebody and, and just build a relationship like that. But LinkedIn does provide the information for me to kind of put some bullets in my gun. So when I'm calling, I, you know, I'm not just shooting blanks and blindly in, in, into nothing. I, I have a, a plan. I know, you know, where to start building the relationship and try and, you know, get my way in. Yeah. Perfect. Just like anything else, right? It's a platform, but you got to use it the right way. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Thank you, uh, Kent. I'm going to, it's just looking at the clock and realizing, okay, sure, asked, you better you better wrap it up now because now time is getting close. <laughs> so let's hit boom. We did this. Okay. So then, and we are coming up to the end here. So remember I asked you at the beginning, is your business where you want it to be? And uh, I recall there was zero people who said yes. 
And now I want to ask you, um, same thing, show of hands, are you spending eight or more hours a week marketing your business? I so, will be. <laughs> good, good. In all, in all honesty, as few words as possible, what is one thing you can do starting next week to grow your business? Start spending eight hours a week. And, and if you don't know what to do during that time and you don't want to hire somebody to help you, use the eight hours to research and determine what to do and how to do it. But it just up your marketing. And then over time, commit to getting better, you know, finding the right strategies that work for you. But, you know, if your business is not where you want it to be, often it's because you're not focused enough on marketing. So then, then I, there was a question I think Chris asked. I, I hope, I, I, I really like this and I'm gonna just take a moment to share because I think it puts things into perspective. So this is what, this in my opinion, is, are, the, are the principles, if you will, to build your business. You gotta know what you want, right? Another word for that is your vision and your goals, right? Like, I mean, you're not gonna hit you're not going to get what you want in 2022 if you don't know what you want. I mean, I know this is so simple and God bless us. We don't do sometimes what we need to do. Number two, you got to believe you can have it. And so many of us struggle with self-esteem, um, self-doubt, struggles. I'm, I'm personally seeing a therapist. I'm on medication. I mean, Sometimes my belief is wicked high and I love myself just the way I am. Sometimes I don't like myself and I'm depressed. So committing to a never ending dedication to belief and mental, mental health and mental awareness, because if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to take action. Then, so now if you know what you want and you believe you can have it and do it, you got to know what to do. Okay, well, what do I do? Well, today we kind of went over what to do, Okay. Then you got to know how to do it. Okay, Mike, speaking, you said that's the number one strategy. Why? How do I do it? Where do I find the associations? How do I reach out to them? How do I pitch them? Do I offer them four talks or one talk? You know, there's, there's levels to this. And then you got to do it. So you got to know what you want, believe you can have it, know what to do, know how to do it. Then you need to take action. Okay, and then this is a big one that I think we leave off, but it's huge and it can be done simply. You got to measure your results so you know if what you're doing is working and compare your results to what the standard is. So, you know, are these good or bad and what do I need to do better? Then you adjust and make improvements where needed and you work to repeat and enjoy the process. And that's that's a big thing that. I, I really believe in, and that's helping people learn to enjoy this. It does not need to be uh, sales stinks, sleazy, dirty, salesy. <laughs> I mean, these are the words we hear. It can be love and service. It really can. So what I'd like to do now is two, I want to do two quickie uh, administrative things, and then I want to end with, with a visualization, and then we are done. Uh, first of all, I do a weekly easing, just like you heard me explain. It's a tip or a strategy that comes out weekly on facets of growing your business. If you would like to stay in touch with me and receive my easing, just pop your email in the chat. Simple as that. Um, do it privately or for everyone to see. I'll copy the chat. I'll add you to my easing list. And then once a month, I do a free, at least once a month, a free training on a facet of business, okay? For those of you that want a complimentary consultation with me, I'm putting my scheduler in the chat so you guys can see how a scheduler works. Um, so what? just to be clear, what a, what a complimentary consultation is, is I take about 50 minutes with you. You, you, you. Once you register, I'll send you four questions to think about and come prepared to discuss. And it's basically, what do you want? What are your goals? Um, 
how you're going to feel when you get it, how you're going to feel if you don't, because I'm trying to create some tension there and have you get really excited about your future and, and, and feel some pain if you don't do it. Like we're not getting any younger. What the hell is not going for it now serving us, okay? And then I'll ask you about your marketing and your sales and your pricing. All the while I'm determining, do I think I can help this person? I only take on 10 clients at a time. Um, so I'm thinking, can I help this person? And then I want you to be doing the same with me. Do I like the Michael style? Do I think you can help me? If so, we'll talk about how my coaching works. I do either one-on-one -on -one and group, like one-on-one -on -one slash small group or group only. Obviously group only is less, less, uh, less money. But if you're even thinking, gee whiz, I think I might like to work with Michael do a consult. You don't need to know for sure. And you're not going to get some hard sell from me. Can't hurt to me. Lastly, I would like us to just close our eyes for a moment. Just maybe take a deep breath and just let's center ourselves for just a moment. And in this moment, whatever level of vision or dream you can bring to the forefront of your mind for your business, please call it forth now. I want to have 10 clients and be traveling the world speaking. Whatever it is, it's perfect. And if it's a bit of a struggle, that's okay. Just Think of a, a goal, a big goal for 2022. Here's what I just want to say. And please, if you would, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes closed now, just kind of just be in a moment of peace. To the extent calling to mind that vision was a challenge for you, it's okay. And I would ask you to think about it more later tonight and or first thing tomorrow morning. Don't wait past that. Because what I believe is to the extent you can envision what you want for your coaching business, then it's doable. Okay, the very fact that you can call it to, to your mind means that you have the corresponding ability to manifest it. I, I believe in God, and I don't believe God would implant within us the desire to be a coach and to serve people and play a dirty trick on us and not give us the ability and the wherewithal to manifest it. So I take awesome comfort in that. And I believe there are dozens and or hundreds and maybe even thousands of people out in your community, your city, your state, the United States and beyond, other countries that need you. They don't know it, but they need, there's people out there who need Lisa in particular, that need Kent in particular, that need Amber in particular that need you to help them achieve what they want and need, which is what you coach on. So I, I just love that. And I think it's your responsibility to get out there. Some people said that at the beginning of the call today, you got to put yourself out there. That's marketing. And these people will find you. You will find them and you'll be doing a wonderful thing together by helping them reach their goals and dreams. And that's your responsibility. Okay. So thank you very much for listening. I hope to visit with you in the future. And if I can do anything for you, do not hesitate to reach out in any way whatsoever. I'll just pop my email in the chat. And thank you again, Stacy. Thank you, Michael. I uh, really appreciate that. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, we're going to go into um, the breakout rooms. I've forgot to mention that at the beginning, but uh, 
Um, really appreciate, Michael, your time and, and your presentation today. And again, thank you, Stacy, for putting this together and all the work that you do uh, for these programs. Um, Stacy has put in the chat uh, the survey, the post 